You're listening to the Patenting for Inventors podcast with registered patent attorney, Dr. Adam Diamond, founder of Diamond Patent Law, the number one source for securing your intellectual property needs. Now, here's your host, Adam Diamond. Hello and welcome to the Patenting for Inventors podcast, episode 41, Introduction to Different Types of Patent Rejections. My name is Dr. Adam Diamond, a registered patent attorney and founder and owner of Diamond Patent Law in Los Angeles, California. I can be contacted through my website at diamondpatentlaw.com, that's D-I-A-M-E-N-T, patentlaw.com, or if that's too hard to remember, you can get to it through patentingforinventors.com, that's patentingforinventors.com, or call me at 424-281-0162. And while most attorneys can only practice in states where they're members of that state's bar, patent attorneys are actually allowed to practice and practice patent law in any state. So feel free to contact me regardless of where you live. So far for the U.S. applications, I've covered drafting and filing, receiving an allowance, but most of the time the patent office will not allow your application right away. This is normal, so don't freak out. It's expected. You're going to see two different types of reasons why you can't get a patent, and these are objections and rejections. Rejections are usually law-based, and objections are usually because you didn't follow some kind of patent office rule. What this means is that if you get a rejection, it's usually because legally you can't get a patent for what you're claiming. And there are four main ones you'll see, and these are called, uh, these four types are 101 rejections, 102 rejections, 103 rejections, and 112 rejections. These numbers refer to the United States Code and are in Title 35. I'm going to cover rejections in this episode and objections in the next episode. Very briefly, a 101 rejection means that you can't get a patent on your claims because the subject matter is not something that is patent eligible. I'll read the entire text of 35 USC 101. Whoever invents or discovers any new and useful process, machine, manufacture, or composition of matter or any new and useful improvement thereof, may obtain a patent, therefore, subject to the conditions and requirements of this title. So, let's say that you're trying to patent a mathematical formula. This is not allowed, so you will get a 101 rejection. Your claim is rejected under 35 U.S.C. 101 because it is not a useful process, machine, manufacture, or composition of matter. Now, generally, this isn't a problem unless you're doing some type of business method or sometimes software-related claims will get this. But most things that people are inventing uh, usually don't fall under a 101 uh, category that gets rejected. The next type of rejection is a 102 rejection. I'm not going to read the whole thing because it's kind of long, but look up 35 USC 102 online if you want to read it. This is the novelty rejection. If you get this, it means that the examiner believes that he or she found something that is identical to what you're claiming. Let's say you're claiming a new kind of mechanical pencil. And you say that your invention is a mechanical pencil having parts A, B, and C. If the examiner finds another mechanical pencil that has parts A, B, and C, even if it has other parts, the examiner will reject your claim as being what's called anticipated, which means that all the limitations you claimed already exist. The other pencil may have additional parts, but all that's important is that the elements that you claimed already exist generally in one reference. It could be in another patent, it may be in a catalog, or it could be anything, but it's generally going to be found in one place. The next type of rejection is a 103 rejection. Again, the actual text of the code is long, but you can look it up. Uh, This is the obviousness rejection. The examiner is saying that what you claim doesn't exist exactly how you claimed it, but the examiner found usually two or more things that could be combined to make your invention. And this combination is obvious to a person having ordinary skill in the art. I'll go over how to respond later to these types of rejections. This is the most common, and about 80% of all rejected applications have a 103 rejection. The next type of rejection is a 112 rejection. There are actually different unrelated things in 35 USC 112, but the two main ones are 112A and 112B. 112A says that your application has to have a description that is sufficient to enable a person having ordinary skill in the art to make and use your invention. Go back and listen to the episodes on written description and enablement to know what that means. But basically, if the examiner doesn't think that you described your invention sufficiently for someone to actually make and use it, you can get rejected. What this can also mean is that you claim something in your invention that you never discussed in your written description. That's one kind of 112 rejection. It's called a 112A rejection. The other type of rejection is a 112B rejection. And 112B says, and I'll just read it, it says conclusion. The specification shall conclude with one or more claims, particularly pointing out and distinctly claiming the subject matter which the inventor or a joint inventor regards as the invention. So what does this usually mean? I'm sure you've 
probably have claims in your application. So why is the examiner saying that your claims don't, don't point out and distinctly claim the subject matter? Oftentimes you'll get this rejection if you didn't write your claims in a clear way. Go back and listen to the episodes in the podcast on claim drafting to help you with that. If you didn't use the words a uh, or the correctly, you could get a 112B rejection. Uh, maybe your invention has two kinds of rods in it, a curved rod and a straight rod. And in your claims... You claim these rods doing different things, but maybe in your claims you said the rod is connected to the base. If it's unclear which rod you're talking about, you'll get a rejection because your claim doesn't uh, point out distinctly and claim the subject matter. There are other kinds of rejections, but you don't see them that much, so I'm not going to cover them. It's basically what you need to remember are the 101, 102, 103, and 112 rejections, and now you know what each of them means in a general sense. In future episodes, I'm going to go over how to respond to these types of rejections. If you want help with drafting your patent application, you can contact me through my website at patentingforinventors.com, that's patentingforinventors.com, or call Diamond Patent Law at 424-281-0162. I'm Adam Diamond, and until next time, keep on inventing. Thanks for listening to the Patenting for Inventors podcast with host Adam Diamond. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review on iTunes. The contents of this podcast are intended for general informational purposes only. The facts of every legal matter are unique, and the content of this podcast should not be construed as offering legal advice for your specific legal situation. For more information and help with your own intellectual property needs, contact Adam Diamond at patentingforinventors.com. That's patentingforinventors.com or call Diamond Patent Law at 424-281-0162. The preceding information may be considered an attorney advertisement and does not establish any attorney-client relationship.